What's up, legends? If you've ever wanted to paint your own car at home in your garage, I want to tell you that you absolutely can. Now, I've got a video coming up shortly to show you just exactly how you can do it, and you can see just how I got on when I went up against... The world's most evil compressor. Yeah, you heard me. An evil compressor. Without any more silliness, let's get into it. I will just take a second to point out here while Dan is walking up the customer's driveway that this isn't the sort of job we would normally take on. The main reasons for that are when people self-prep their cars, it's very, very rare that the prep is good enough or up to the standard that we are happy to paint over. A little bit of a different scenario here. This is a father and son team that have put hundreds of hours into getting this car where they want it. And, you know, we sort of felt a bit sorry for them because they were having a bit of a, a nightmare painting it. And we wanted to help out, get to the point where they could get their car on the track because it's going to be a race car. So that's why we agreed to it. So without further ado, let's get back into it and get some paint on the car. What's up, legends? So we're here about to paint a customer's car in his own garage. Let's go in and take a look. Will this be a mistake? As you can see, got everything hung, placed out where we want it. Everything's had a good panel wipe and a good tack rag. So I'm about to mask up and let's see if we can get a nice finish on this. So what we're doing here, folks, this is just a final tack rag down now um, using the sticky tack cloths. They will be linked in the description for you as well. So if you need any of these, you can buy them uh, along with everything else we've used today. So final tack off now, and then I'm going to start laying paint down, so I'll switch over to the chest mount. Now, one thing it's worth noting here, when you're at this stage, blowing out the last little bits of dust and using your tack cloths to get every last little bit of contamination that you can as far as dust and dirt nibs and things like that go off the panel, it's worth taking plenty of time to do this, simply because this is kind of your last barrier, your last line of defence in between getting it clean and getting paint down on the car. So it really is worth taking your time with this, getting into every little nook and cranny that you can and just making sure you've done it properly. So as you'll see here, we are absolutely fired up to start getting paint down on this car. And the gun I'm using here, the Vilbis FLG5, is to be fair, quite a bit of a monster of a gun. It's fantastic for anything direct gloss or primer or any heavy coatings, commercial things. But you'll see immediately I start messing with the gauge there. Now whilst doing the edges of the door here, it's not too bad, small areas, it's it's you know starts to put down the paint fine. The trouble though is when we get to the bigger areas like this, mm -hmm absolute disaster there was something going on with the compressor it just wouldn't keep up and it was a 50 litre three horsepower compressor which i've used plenty of times with these guns with pretty good results but you can see there how long i'm having to wait in between passes just to be able to get the paint on that's after one coat on the door and it's taken me about 15 minutes just to get that coat down you can see there every time i, I put air on it just starts to drop right below one bar and i cannot keep it above so it, it turned out that this bit was an absolute nightmare. You'll see folks, I just keep going back to that gauge just to try and get 
some sort of adjustment. So I decided to do some of the more unseen areas uh, whilst I get used to the way the gun's laying the paint down with, with what's going on with the compressor. Shortly after this, I went round all the water traps and outlets and filters, trying to open everything as wide as I possibly could just to get the best airflow, but it didn't change a thing. You know, sometimes we forget just how spoiled we are with the 11 kilowatt screw with our 700 litres capacity that we have at the workshop, but it really makes life a lot easier. You probably noticed in that first clip of me painting the door that this, the opacity of this colour is not great, so it's hiding power isn't brilliant, which means you need a good few coats to be able to cover any of those primer patches or light areas. So after doing a couple of those unseen areas, I decided just to go around, get a good ground coat over all of those primed areas and those darker areas that are going to show through different, just so that if it is going to be a nightmare hard paint job, I don't have to worry about that as well as getting, getting the finish. So I decided to go around and try and get coverage in all those primary areas. So my only real worry then is getting a good finish on everything or, you know, enough of an acceptable finish for the customer. Um, so just doing that on the roof section now, I'll go around a few more bits and just cover that primer. And then we're going to start putting full coats down on everything when I'm happy. Meanwhile, though, this is still really struggling. The compressor's just not keeping up. So at this point, I was getting pretty twitchy about painting such a big area as this roof and that front end. The roof I wasn't so worried about because it's hanging up vertical, you'll get natural flow out in the paint. What really bothered me though was that front end, that bonnet set up, that was flat. So you're gonna get, you know, if you're not careful, you're gonna get builds and things like that in the wrong areas. And you're just gonna see it as dark and light patches. Of course, the issue is with the way the compressor was behaving, I couldn't use a technique that we call triggering off. So it's essentially where you keep the air on flowing through the spray gun all the time. And all you do is squeeze back further for your paint and then let back off so that there's always air on. And it prevents a, like a gush of paint coming out when you start off. And essentially it means that you don't get a build up in that area because you really do see it, especially with direct gloss colors. If you don't trigger off properly, you will see like a big thick dark patch. So you have to be really careful not to do that as well. Hence why the way you'll see me spraying a lot of the time is kind of coming right off the edge of the panel, letting go, waiting for the pressure to build up and then bringing it back on and trying to get a full pass across the panel wherever possible. But as I say, just in this, this point now, I'm just trying to cover up a lot of those primed areas, those darker areas that could stand the risk of showing through and, and you, you wouldn't get that car out in the sunlight. You're going to see those a mile away. So we want to make sure all that's covered so we've got good opacity and good coverage. So I'm just going over that, that larger primer patch on the roof now. Then we go for a few others on the car and then it's going to be time to get onto that front end bonnet and just see how we get on with that. So just moving around onto this section now, I've basically shot some paint under that transmission tunnel. Um, and I'm just it's, I'm just getting the kind of bulkhead area, engine cradle area, and under bonnet area. These are all parts that the customer, to be fair, did a reasonable job getting a good coat of paint on. So now they've been prepped. They only really want just a good coat over just to freshen them up and, and have them appear like the rest of the car. So again, I just decided to do these little bits first before moving on to kind of the main, you know, constantly in view panels like the front end and the rear quarters and the, the back end of the car. Just showing you there, you can see getting that finish on there quite nicely. So by this point, I've, I've kind of gotten to grips with exactly how it's laying down and how to get the best finish out of it. But um, we move on to the next side and kindly Dan pops in and asks me if I want to try the other gun that we've bought with us, which is a smaller gun. It's an A&I Iwata. And to be fair, it's kind of a midi gun, whereas this is the full size gun. You've got your smart repair guns and that kind of sits right in the middle. So I thought, you know what, I'm not going to massive amount of paint left in this one. Why not give it a go? Because if it, if it helps me in any way or if it's a little bit more gentle on the air consumption, we're going to stand the chance of getting the car painted a bit more evenly and getting a better finish on it. Now, initially, this gun did start to run a little bit better. So it has a lower CFM requirement than the FLG5, meaning that it, you know, CFM is cubic feet a minute, so it uses less air per minute than the FLG5. So initially, it looked promising. Um, but, you know, you can see after a few passes there, um, I'm starting to sort of slow down again and have to wait just a few seconds each time for that pressure to build up. And it isn't long before I start looking at the gun settings and seeing what I can adjust to try and just get the best efficiency possible out of it. 
Um, it did seem like it was spraying a bit unevenly. It turned out there was a, just a chunk of rubbish in the air cap. This was a brand new gun as well, so we literally just unboxed it, cleaned it all out. But there was obviously just some debris in the air cap. But I cleared that out, and then the fan pattern was lovely. Um, but you can see here, I'm just just messing with the settings, just trying to dial it in so I can just get some kind of consistent airflow through the gun. So here you can see, I'll just move on to, again, some of the smaller pieces. Just trying to get some paint laid down on the smaller panels first before we go to the main car, like I said before. Um, at this point, though, this was when I could really see laying paint on a flat panel, just how bad that fan pattern was. Um, apologies about the camera angle there. For some reason, the GoPro was where we just decided to adjust the angle and it just wasn't pointing at the gun. But you'll see in a moment, this is when I actually sort of take the air cap off and try and have a look down the horn holes and stuff. And I don't know if it was just like a little piece of blue roll or something that got in there from when we was wiping it out after kind of degreasing the gun and giving it its initial clean out the box to get all the assembly oils and things off it. But there was just something not right. Um, and that's why I was even checking the cup, make sure it weren't restricted or something in there, making sure that the top hole, because if they block up, they can restrict the paint flow. Um, so I was just testing it on the plastic on the wall just here just to see what the fan pattern was doing and it was mega bottom heavy so it was pretty obvious one of the horn holes was blocked so it was just whip the air cap off and have a quick look and uh, it soon got sorted Dan just whipped the air cap away just brushed it out and blew it out and away we went and once the air cap issue was sorted there's just another angle here where I'm just trying to wrestle that paint onto this tailgate this boot lid it was just a nightmare to be honest i really thought we'd made a huge mistake taking this on you know at this point when i couldn't even get paint down nice on a panel this big um it, it was going down all right don't get me wrong and the finish was there but it was just such a job to get it on the panels but moving on to that second door now door number two and as with the first one going around the edges wasn't too bad so obviously they're small areas you know fairly narrow so a couple of passes of the gun, it gets the paint down looking pretty good. It's when I move around to the front of the door, you can really see the trouble I'm having. So it, the technique, it looks like the technique I'm using is really odd and completely unnatural. And it was, it was just, you know, normally you'd smash over that door, no problem in one coat without stopping, you know, you know, it's 50% overlap. That wouldn't be an issue. But you see when I move to the front, just what a pain it is the way I'm having to kind of paint section by section and then fill it in and then go back over to make sure there is no dark or light patches or stripes or anything like that. Usually again, you know, with our big workshop compressor, you'd never have to worry about that. You'd just continuously pass over the door um, or whatever panel you were painting, wouldn't matter how big it was because it just keeps up and it gives you all the air you need and provides you with continuous airflow. You know, even so much that we can run air fed masks and the big guns at work. And so it just makes life a lot easier in that respect. But that's the edges and the backside as far as I need to go into done. And now you'll see when we move on to the front now, just what a nightmare it was. Like I said, there's a few points throughout this job where I thought, you know what, we've made a huge mistake. I'm not going to be able to get the paint just to, to lay down the way I want, not to be able to get it look as even as I want. Um, and that sort of really bothered me because, you know, putting paint down on a car like this, the customer's got a certain expectation. Although their expectations weren't stupidly high, you kind of have an expectation for them of yourself. Um, and if you go in there as a professional, you know, you don't want to turn around and say, well, actually we couldn't get the paint down right or we couldn't do it for whatever reason. So <clears throat> we just kept persevering, we kept battling on. And although it was a nightmare, you know, it, panel by panel, we just kind of found the best technique for each panel and managed to get the finish so far that you've seen on the video. Um, I will walk you around the car at the end as well so you can see kind of final result of what it looked like. But I just wanted to make sure all these separate panels were done and I was happy that I'd got some level of finish or, or at least continuous coat on them before I started moving on to the actual full shell of the car or anything like that. And you can see it's just paint a bit, stop, paint a bit, stop, paint a bit, stop, and just wait for the air to build up in the compressor just a little bit, a couple of PSI in between passes. So it was just like I say, almost like a paint by numbers where you just got to do a section, you know, kind of get that okay, move to the next one, and then join them all up at the end and, and blend over to make sure there was no kind of major craziness or stripes or dark or light patches or anything like that. So... 
That is door number two, more or less. You know, I'm happy with that coat as far as the first coat goes on it. Um, it is going to want a second and possibly a third, dependent on opacity and coverage, but it was a nice uniform grey primer, so two good coats on that should be enough. Quick paint check now, just to see what I've got left in the cut, which isn't going to be a massive amount at this point, so just adjust the camera, you can see there. Um, so I should, you know, at that point, I decided I've got enough just to do the passenger side, like near side sill of the car, because I'd already done that front section, as you saw me painting earlier. So now it's just time to kind of work backwards now, fill in the sill and then work across that front scuttle panel as well. So I'd got enough in the gun for that. So we just went for it and, uh, and got that sill coated up. And you can see here, folks, I'm just taking my time on this sill because it's got some red oxide primer on there that the customer's put on. So I want to make sure, like I mentioned with the opacity of this paint earlier not being that good, I want to make sure that I get a good, good ground coat over all that so that it's more or less covered. And then when I come back in with the second one, really, we're not trying to fight for coverage. We're just literally going for finish on that second coat. So I'm just taking a little bit extra time on there and making sure I get plenty of colour down over that red oxide primer. And then up into kind of the front door shut area as well, um, along that sill again, where I can just still see a little bit of that red oxide grinning through. So working up onto the sort of A pillars, if you like, and the scuttle now, and just that, that kind of front door closure area. Again, you know, this was a small part, only a few inches wide. And so I just thought, again, small parts, get that done first, get some color on there, get at least a rough finish on there, and then just the rear of the door shut as well. I'm just kind of trying to do it section by section, whereas normally you just start at one corner of the car and you'd, you'd fly around, you know, really painting a shell like this you'd have a coat each coat would be taking you 10 15 minutes to get on the car so it'd be no drama you'd be just in and out you know a couple of coats and it'd be good as gold so because this was direct gloss and because of the nature of it you get a lot of overspray in the air that kind of lands as dry dust on the panels so before i got onto these big flat panels i wanted to make sure i gave them a serious good tack rack and get all that overspray off because if you don't, it can show up as like grit in the finish and it's just a nightmare to be able to sand it back out. So doing this now, because there was no major extraction in this garage, was definitely the right thing to do. So here we go on the front end then. Somehow I managed to get that roof panel painted, but now you're gonna see just how painfully slow I'm having to go with this compressor setup. So you can see between each pass there, I'm just having to stop, pause, wait for just any bit of pressure to build up. And this isn't conducive to getting a good finish on anything. So it's been a real pain up to this point. But I sort of battle on, try and get some of those, those areas that would otherwise go dry with a good wet coat of paint on them, just like you see I'm doing here. Um, just sort of paint from the middle back out and then switch sides. But usually I'll be able to go all the way across this front end in one pass and come back with another one, no problem with the compressor that we've got set up at the workshop. So it just makes it so painfully slow. But the problem with that is, as you're, you're passing further on, then that paint's flashing off that you've already put down and all that overspray is landing on it and drying and making it look really gritty and like it's full of dust and rubbish. So that's why then you'd have to do a mammoth polishing job if you, you can't kind of get the paint on fast enough because the overspray just causes a big problem. So you see, I'm just literally having to do it in small patches. So, you know, at this point, to be fair, Dan decided he'd have enough, he'd had enough of seeing us struggle get the paint on. So he decided to make a round trip and go and fetch us some spray guns from the workshop, some of our mini guns. So whilst he was gone, I carried on trying to get a coat over this front end as best as I could. You can see I've got most of it done there, just moving onto the side light tunnel now. I really cannot express enough how much of a nightmare it is to have to keep going to start and stop paint like this. It's super, super frustrating because usually we just are able to just rip that paint on, you know, one pass after another, flow it all over and get a nice coat. And this is just painstaking trying to lay it on. So we'll skip to Dan and see how he's getting on. So halfway through this paint job, we found that the compressor these guys have got just can't keep up with our guns. So I'm off now on a 56 minute round trip to go and pick up a smaller gun from the workshop. Let's go. So at this point, needless to say, I got pretty got excited. I was able to paint with way more of a normal technique. Let's go do it. See, uh, 
flowing over the entire width of the panel, pass by pass. So this made life a lot easier. It still didn't quite 100% keep up with the gun, but it was so much better being able to actually lay a coat down per panel, uh, rather than having to keep stopping and changing and messing about. And Dan's just giving a quick pass over those doors on camera now so that you can see how much better they look straight away just from painting with a different gun. And uh, you'll see in the background there, I'm just carrying on around the other side of the front end again with the new gun, just making sure I get a nice even coat over that. And I've also gone over that boot lid there that you see mounted on the floor and also the roof that's hanging on the back wall there. So I've managed to, to speed up massively now, now I've got this gun. So there's the finish on the roof panel. Now I've managed to get its final two coats on after covering that primer. And you'll see in a moment that I'm just working around the other side of the front end, getting the final coats on that. And then we really get to get into the fun bit of this, which is painting the rest of the body shell. So down the rear quarters, down the rest of the sills and across the back end and onto a finish really is what we're looking for. Then that should be everything painted. I'll check over everything though at that point and make sure it doesn't need any more before I carry on. So like I said before, still not 100% perfect, but a million times better than it was before. You can see now how I can just lay that finish down on the car with no messing about really. Take a little bit longer than it normally would, but it's, it's no drama with this gun now. I'm just so happy to be able to have this and start getting those quarter panels painted. I really didn't want to touch the back end of the car, you know, uh, with it being the quarters and, and the rear end that's always on display before I absolutely knew I could get the finish just how I wanted it. Uh, I didn't want it to be dry and then coming back to try and flat and polish that because they're awkward areas and things like that. So that's why it was definitely the right thing to paint it last. Slightly awkward area now, moving around that stand and that rotisserie, but so happy to be at this stage in the job. This one's been some serious hard work. Last little bit now, let's go. What a day. So this one, the compressor has just fought me all the way, as I mentioned earlier on with the voiceover, but let's take you for a little walk around just so you can see, even after all that fighting, what we've got. It's even ruined my favorite car. <laughs> so. Here we go. Looking pretty smart after all. I say having to fight with that compressor to get that color on, uh, with it being a direct gloss as well, or 2K or I think, if you're in America, you'll call it single stage. Um, it's that type of paint, so more of a commercial finish, but this is gonna be a race car for the customer. So as you can see, it's gonna want a quick nib and polish just to finish it all off. But overall, you know what? For a paint job in a customer's home garage, I'd say that's a pretty decent result overall, especially after the battle we've had. Dan, how have you, how have you gotten on today? I wanna go home on a day. <laughs> yeah, that makes two of us. But there we are. So that's one legends if you know what if you've enjoyed any of this or you even feel remotely sorry for me for having to fight this paint on then please give us a subscribe we've got loads more great content coming up it really is appreciated and also one last little thing if you guys know what car this is whack it in the comments down below and we'll see how many of you get it right there's a big clue look at that front end right 
just to add, if you don't feel sorry for us, subscribe anyway. Yeah, so right. yeah, yeah, subscribe anyway. It's really appreciated. Right, over and out, guys. I'm signing out on this one. I will pick back up with you in the next one. You legends, take care.